Hey guys, welcome back to the Hashcrafter YouTube channel. Today, this is a quick add-on video for our Zcoin mining guide that we released a few days ago. We're gonna go into Mint Pond just a little bit more, and we're gonna also provide you some updates that have occurred since we started shooting that video. I hope you enjoy it, here we go. Welcome back guys. Hey, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe and like button and leave a comment below. This is a brand new channel and every single subscriber means the world to us and we love interacting with you guys. Now, this is just a quick add-on video where there were several minutes of items that we hit in Mint Pond that hit the cutting room floor because that Zcoin mining guide was just so big. So I've decided that anytime I have content like that in the future, I'm going to do a series for example, on Zcoin, where we're going to do a playlist, a Zcoin mining guide playlist, and I'll continue to release updates because a few things happen. We hear back from the community and we hear what their results are, and we're getting some really, really great feedback. I wanna update you on a few of those items today. And then we also have to do just so much editing, hours and hours of editing that has some pretty decent content that you guys never get to see. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to update you on was who am I? I am not a professional miner in any stretch of the imagination. I am an engineer that works for a Fortune 20 company. I'm going to be leaving that job soon, so mining for me is just for fun, but I just don't want to set any wrong expectations. I am not an expert. I am just an average guy having some fun mining. That's it. One quick correction from the first video was the CC Miner Fork by DJM34. That has a 0% dev fee. So all those pluses that I threw out there about that miner, if you choose to use it, it gets 1% better. I got some of that information from a forum and we had loads of facts that we had to drop into the video and that was one we messed up. So we're correcting that now, 0% dev fee on CC Miner DJM34 Fork. There you go. Okay, one other thing we heard back from several community members in the comments. If you haven't visited the comments in the Zcoin Mining Guide, please go do that. There's some really great people having some fun, uh, providing some feedback. And one of those was the Eth Enlargement Pill. It seems like everybody but me is getting good results with the Eth Enlargement Pill, so definitely turn that on. I've got two Windows rigs. I decided I am only going to report to you exactly what I see in testing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to splurge anything. I am human. I'll mess some things up, but I'm only going to report to you exactly what I see in testing. And if you watch the video portion where I started the overclocking at the end, I tried the eth enlargement pill and there was no effect. Several community members who I do trust in the comments said that they are having luck with that. I've also found folks in Discord, so definitely turn that on. And I have been trying it with, again, two Windows machines. I'm still not having luck. I've either got a bad pill or something else, but I'll get that worked out. Turn on F enlargement pill. Another thing I wanted to update you guys on was NiceHash. So we've got a couple pools to look at. We've got Mint Pond, we've got two miners, and NiceHash is coming online. Now, when I started shooting, it was over 10 days ago when I began doing testing, and I had zero success connecting to nice hash MTP mining pool. Since then, it's gotten a lot better. I have been able to mine on it and I've been hitting about a 7% rejection rate. Now, no doubt they're gonna continue to work out those issues. Some folks are having success with almost no rejection rate. So uh, give nice hash a try if that's something you're even interested in. If not, just throw it to the side. But if you are, we'll continue to update you. But right now it looks like nice hash is either there or really, really close to having a solid pool if you're wanting to mine to nice hash and convert those coins to Bitcoin. Okay, one last update is overclocking. Uh, I spent a bit of time in the Zcoin Mining Guide video doing overclocking. And in there, we came out, I think, with a 70 TDP, uh, zero core clock and zero uh, overclock on the memory that worked best for us. And that was what we found out of the, out of the gate. Now, we have since talked to some community members who saw really good results with their memory settings at minus 500. So I've been playing with that. I bumped up my overclock to 85 TDP 
and uh, or 85 on my power limit and afterburner. And then I still have my core clock between zero and 70. And I've got that memory at minus 500. And I'm getting some really good results there. I got about a 10%, maybe a 12% performance increase. Now, no doubt you're gonna get that when you increase your power limits. But I just wanted to update you that you may want to take a look at that memory as well. Now I've got another video coming very soon as part of this Z-Coin series where we'll be testing the overclock settings within Hive OS because what I'm speaking to now, I've only tested in Windows. So we've got that coming soon. So now we're going to jump into that Mint Pond segment. I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. All right, we're going to take a quick look at the Mint Pond interface. And I'm really enjoying this pool so far for a bunch of reasons I'm going to share with you. First, I like to come in here and switch this theme to dark. Now, if you've used other pools, they don't have quite as nice of an interface. And up here, everything's broken out really nice and neat. I've got my network information over here, pool information, and then I've got a couple windows here that I can make some adjustments on specific to my miner. So for example, I can hit this gear icon and I can get the metrics that I'm looking for. And again, if you've used some other pools, you know that you're really just limited to what they provide and that's all you really get. And it may or may not work very well. But here for me, there's a few things that I like taking a look at. So I might want to see what my minor hash rate is currently up to the minute. And I can select that or I can come down here and I can blow this up to two windows size. You can see what what just happened over here. I can bring it to four and it takes up the full screen. Let's say that's the only metric I want to look at. And I hit it again and it comes back down here. So I could close that out and then I can come over to this one and maybe I want to see my minor efficiency over the course of 30 minutes. See that's pretty steady there. Go days. See a few days back. And then over here, you can see my workers. And as I've been bringing workers up and down in the stratum for each of the miners, I've been giving them names and, and not just uh, something generic. I've been putting um, something specific to what device it is, what video card it is, plus what miner it's using. And that's just helped me with testing. And I like how it just kind of breaks these out nice and neat over here off to the side. Now, moving on. Some other things that I really like about this interface and this pool is when you come in here to mine Zcoin, there's a great little tab here. It's getting started. It's got a lot of really easy, straightforward information. So if you want stratum addresses, ports, maybe you're just getting started, as might be the case if you're watching this video, you're just getting started mining Zcoin. He's got tons of great information in here for different miners, where to get them. And it's just a great little reference point for you to take a look at. But again, just lots of good information settings down here. If you want to change your payouts, you just come in here, put in your password, put in the payout that you're looking for. Um, I set this to 0 0.3 because that's around what I should be pulling in per day with this 1060 rig right here. And you can drop in your email address if you want to be notified when miners come on and offline. So that's the interface. I really love it. Uh, one thing I will say about Mint Pond is that it is using a system called the score method. And this is very similar to proportional payouts. However, it adds a weighting factor. The longer your miner stays on the mining pool, the larger the reward is for you. And if you leave, then those shares detract in value. So the idea being to reward miners who aren't pool hopping. So even though you're getting a proportional payout and luck will play a factor, so you're gonna see those earnings be lower than maybe what to mine estimates from time to time, and you're gonna see them a little bit higher, uh, it should balance out. So over the course of five to seven days a week, again, after you get through this initial startup phase, you should see this level out and be on par with what you would see in what to mine. So that's Mint Pond, the interface right there. Let's talk a little bit about the earnings that we've seen using Mint Pond. 
Okay, here's the quick comparison I wanted to show. I took this snapshot yesterday, and you could see my mining earnings right here, the daily earnings. And I was showing 0 0.33, and that was with my 1060 test rig, uh, 6x 1060 test rig. And if I went out to what to mine, I did see um, with the adjustments that I put in there and what I should have been earning, that this was slightly lower than uh, what what to mine was showing. Now, not that what to mine needs to be the end all be all, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, again, I did put in my specific information with the hash rate that I was getting, power consumption, etc., and uh, showing slightly lower. But really, for this to be meaningful result, this isn't anything I would be too discouraged about because with a pool like this you are going to need probably at least seven days on the pool to get a good average to understand what's going on. And not to mention, if I haven't said it already, that what to mine is still trying to figure out the MTP protocol. So we know we're in the ballpark and things are looking pretty good um, on the pool and we're getting what the expected payout should be. Okay guys, that wraps up today's video. If you have not watched the primary video in this series, the Zcoin Mining Guide, go do that because we did have some updates here today to that, but that is the work that encompasses the most if you need to get started mining Zcoin. I hope all of this material is handy for you. We'll have a few more videos in the Zcoin Mining Guide series that'll be coming in the next few days as we are able to get those out. Keep in mind, all of this stuff changes daily. So we'll do our best to stay up with the latest and we'll do our best to correct ourselves or update it as things change. Hey, one more thing on the Zcoin Mining Guide. We're gonna to continue to release a few more add-ons in the coming days that we hope will help out. So stay tuned and we'll create all of this, put it in one uh, succinct playlist that makes it easy if you're starting from beginning to end. Now, one other thing I wanna point out is in that original mining guide, I have timestamps in the description below. You're probably not gonna to wanna to watch the whole thing through unless you need to, unless you need to get in the whole gambit of how to get started. So make sure that if there's something specific that you're looking for, you hit that timestamp in the description below. I hope that helps you guys out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And again, thanks so much for watching guys. Take care, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.